One of the exciting stories from flight achievement, besides the historic moon landing on July 20th, 1969, was the later challenge of Apollo 13 to return safely to Earth after a technical malfunction. The significance of the challenge to Apollo 13 was the limitation to work from only the resources available in the capsule. When it comes to your video project, you can import new resources as needed to support your success in completing your editing mission. It's time to enter the world of video editing with the ability to import video, audio, and images. Let's begin our import audio demonstration by taking a look at the folder structure in the supplied practice files. So we have some audio files noted by the MP3 extension. We have some image files that are in a PNG format. We have a video demonstration in an MP4 format and we have our practice guide. And let me open that up so that we can see our script. Notice that we have our script that indicates that we're going to import three different types of content, video, audio, and images. And that's the goal of this learning objective is to understand how to import the variety of different formats. So let's open up Camtasia. And when we open up, it starts out as an untitled document. One of the first things in a best practice approach is to save the file in a way that is descriptive. In this case, we're working on demonstrating importing. So let's call this import demo. Here is the import folder. And we'll name this import demo. Now that we have the file named, let's go ahead and import our media. And here's our import practice file. Our folder has all of the contents that we want to import. I'm going to just select one item and click open. So we've now imported one object. In this case, it's an audio file and it's now in the clip bin. Let's go ahead and import the other items. I can select across, hold down the shift key and select multiple objects and click open. And now it will import all of the different objects. So notice that in the clip bin, it's organized by images, audio, and video. So now that we have our elements into the clip bin, let's take a look at our script. And we have an idea of the sequence that we want to present. So we're going to have slide one refer to our video demonstration, slide two and an audio demonstration, and slide three for images. Now let's take a look at the content, the different images that we have. I'm just going to bring those down into the timeline. And if I sc scroll along the timeline, I have slide one, an introduction to video, slide two, audio, slide three, images, and the last slide is the ending title. If these were not in the order that I wanted, I could move them around. Right now I've got them all selected, but let me break them apart. And with graphics, you can extend or shorten the duration by hovering over the edge of the content and dragging the mouse to the left or right to decrease or extend the amount of time of the content. Let's take a look at opening slide is our slide one video. I'll shorten this up just a little bit for the potential of moving this along. Now our next item is our video. So we want to go into our clip bin, bring down our video segment, slide that right next to that image. We'll drag slide two. It's our audio indication. Slide three, images, and our ending title. So now we have all these elements, we're going to bring in our audio. So we have two pieces of audio. One is the narration. I'm just going to bring this down into the timeline. And now I have a better idea of the, uh, the timing of the object. So I've roughed out the visuals. Now I've got the audio in there. I have a sound effect that's going to be synchronized into the second area of the content. And then I have all of our, our visuals and our video in place. So now I just need to listen to the audio 
and synchronize the content. Slide one. Okay. So we have slide one, video. Video. And then we're at a point. So I'm going to zoom in on this. At this point, this is where we want the video to present, which we have that happening. But I want the audio to delay to after the video. So up here under our, our tool menu, I have a split tool and I have the audio clip selected. I'm going to just click the split button and now I can move that part of the audio down a little bit. So I have the slide one and then video. Now consider that I've got this describing the video here. And down here on the main timeline, let me just slide back the slide title. We'll move the video up. So now we're hearing the word video while we start to see the video presentation. I'm just holding down the mouse and scrubbing along the timeline. So our video concludes at the end of the video. We'll slide our slide two, which introduces audio. So let me just slide the audio to the left so we can begin that. I'm going to hit the space bar. Toggling the space bar will hit play and pause in your timeline. Slide two, audio. Okay, so we have slide two, audio, and we want to hear the sound effect. So let me bring down the sound effect. All right, so I can visually see the sound effect is going to last a duration of time here. And I'm going to need to split this audio clip of the narration based on our script. So let me select that object in the timeline on the track and use the split tool. Now I can slide this down. I see the uh, audio decay of the sound effect of the bell. Let me drag across. I'm going to marquee select and select outside and drag across to select these two objects. Move them down. And I want to extend the duration of the slide for the audio. So we introduce audio, we hear the sound effect, that finishes up, and then we have slide three. Slide three, we have that introduced, and then we have our ending graphic. We'll finish out the scene. Now let's scroll back along the timeline. Let's see what we have. Slide one, video. Slide two, audio. Pond5.com. Slide three, images. So in the clip bin, we have our collection of images, our audio files, and video. We've been able to, once we import them into the clip bin, bring them down into the timeline and begin to work and synchronize with the content. We're also able to edit some of the audio clips so that they could be spaced out in the timeline to synchronize with the appropriate visuals. So now that we've got that, let's save the project. To produce the content, use the Produce and Share menu. Select a resolution for the rendered output. We'll get into the quality settings during the publishing section of the course. Notice when we click Next, we will get prompted to identify the name of the video file. This will default to the current name of the file. It can also be changed if needed. I have found that using a consistent naming strategy makes it easier to manage content. On the menu options, you also have the opportunity to confirm the location of the video file. In this case, we're locating the rendered output to the import folder we created earlier. Click Save and Finish to begin the render. It will render out depending on the quality settings and the amount of effects in your content in a time frame based on the computer processing speed of your computer. While the content is rendering, we can take a look at our folder structure and see the value of not only having the elements organized in a project folder, having a script for the plan for the content, but notice now we have our Camtasia project file now saving or now saved in the import folder and then our import demo folder is created when we produce the content and inside here once the rendering is done it will have our video file it's not quite ready yet slide one video 
Slide 2, Audio. Pond5.com Slide 3, Images. Now that we've finished the rendering, we can determine if additional editing is needed and then re-render. At the end of the render, you will be prompted to finish the publishing settings with a reminder about the selections used. Click Finish to clear the menu from the screen. This demonstration has shown how to import a variety of media elements into your project.